Daytona International Speedway is a 2.5 mile track. So why are all the cars only inches apart? And if you got hit from behind while going 200 miles an hour, would you thank the driver who did it? If you understood aerodynamics, you probably would. The roar of the engines, the squeal of the tires, then the race to victory lane. It all says NASCAR. A race car is much more than steel, gas, rubber, and speed. A race car is a science experiment on wheels. It's hard to imagine that air matters much to a speeding race car, but the billions and billions of air molecules hitting the car really do make a big difference. Sometimes, air helps the car by pushing the tires into the track and creating grip. But other times, air is the enemy, and that can be a real drag. Drag is a bad thing because it basically acts against the motor and it, it, it hurts you as far as fuel efficiency goes and it hurts you in terms of speed, top end speed. Roll your window down, stick your hand out. That force on your hand trying to pull it back towards the back of the car, that's drag. That's how much physical drag you have on your hand. You got lower pressure on the back side, higher pressure on the front side, so it just wants to push your hand back. Drag is essentially that back pressure, if you will, on the car. Compare the force you feel when you hold your hand perpendicular to the ground to the force you feel when you hold your hand parallel to the ground. When your hand is parallel, it has to push fewer air molecules out of the way, so there's less drag. Less drag is a good thing. Rough surfaces and anything that sticks out from the car increase drag. That's why there are no side view mirrors like there are on passenger cars. The mirrors are placed as far inside the car as possible. And rough surfaces, like grills, are taped. We're no longer passing air through a grill, through a radiator, which has a lot of resistance and friction. We put the tape on the grill. Most of the air just goes up and over the car. From an aerodynamic standpoint, it's the best thing we can do. It reduces drag. The trade-off is that it heats up the engine, and eventually that's bad. But four times a year, teams pay much more attention to drag than they do the rest of the season. That's when NASCAR visits the two longest tracks on the circuit, Daytona and Talladega. At those racetracks, the banking is tremendous. You can get around the track very quickly at a very high speed. To keep speeds in a safe range, NASCAR requires cars to use an engine restrictor plate at Daytona and Talladega. If we took our normal Charlotte car to Daytona, it would probably run 215 miles an hour. The team brings a car with as little drag as possible, but drivers have invented their own way of compensating for the limited horsepower, drafting. I love drafting. Um, you know, to be at 200 miles an hour with 43 guys around you and you're just beating each other down the straightaways and sometimes in the corners. When two cars are far apart, each car has to push air molecules out of its way and each car is pulled backward by the low pressure region created by its wake. Now imagine what happens when the two cars get close to each other. By close, I don't mean a few feet, I mean a few inches. When two cars get close enough, air flows around them as if they were a single car. This decreases the total amount of drag on the two cars because one car is pushing the air molecules out of the way for both cars. The first car doesn't generate as much of a wake either because the second car is so close behind it. The end result is that the second car gets pulled along with the first car and they both go faster. If you could put two engines in one car, that's two cars drafting, you know, because one car is still only pushing the air. Two cars drafting can go three to five miles an hour faster than either car can go on its own. Drafting is most beneficial at Talladega and Daytona because of the restricted engine power, but you'll see drafting at high-speed tracks like Indianapolis and Michigan, too. Driving a few inches from each other going 200 miles an hour just wasn't enough for some drivers. The desire for speed quickly turned drafting into bump drafting. Well, it feels like bumping at 200 miles an hour. <laughs> I mean, I know that's, that's, a, that's a pretty, pretty dulled down version, but it, it's pretty exhilarating. There's sometimes I look up in my mirror and I go, oh boy, you know, this, this one, I'm gonna feel this one and I hope it doesn't spin me out because sometimes it can be a really abrupt impact. When two cars are drafting, the second car doesn't have to break its own hole in the air, which means the second car has a little unused engine power. When the trailing driver steps on the gas, he speeds up and hits the rear bumper of the first car, transferring speed to the car in front. The whole point of racing is being the fastest. So why would a driver help another car go faster? Self-benefit, only and sheerly self-benefit. If two cars are faster than one, it doesn't matter which one of the two I am. You know, I wanna be one of the two and, and we're gonna go forward. And then once you get to the front, 
then you pass for the lead. And as the race gets closer and closer to the end, taps become bumps and become hits and become slams and it's bam, 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 and you really, really feel it. People say that Dale Earnhardt Sr. was so good at drafting because he could see the air. Dale Jr. is pretty good too, with seven of his 18 wins coming at Daytona or Talladega. But even if you don't have any Earnhardt genes, you can still see the air too, if you know the science of drafting.